So I basically had an eight foot high wall and then on either side I had the potatoes growing in rows. That's what we got off one side. Right, this is a big bowl. This is like a 16 inch diameter bowl. Right, we got some big ones here. I got a six foot four man, so this is about the width of my hand, four inches, four inch potato. That's not bad. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I'm harvesting the potatoes that I grew here in this bed with a pea trellis. So I thought I would just film that and show you the results. So what I had here was peas planted down the center, uh, sugar snap peas, and the, the trellis was about eight feet high right down the center. So basically I had an eight foot high wall and then on either side I had the potatoes growing in rows. All right, when you've got these, uh, you know, raised bed or whatever you want to call this box garden, um, growing something in a trellis, you can only really have one trellis. You can have two, but, but it gets better late if there's just one. And so you've got all this space on either side. Uh, you can't just plant anything in that space, but I've found things like potatoes tend to work. So uh, it's not optimal conditions for potatoes, of course, because they're not getting the best light they could possibly get but I found it works just fine. So uh, I think all I had here was a row of potatoes on this side and a row on that side. I can't remember now because the plants are all gone, <laughs> right? They're just like, they're, they're, you can't even tell I grew potatoes here. The plants have completely just broken down, which means it's time to harvest them. So let's get working here. I'll talk a little bit, then I'll probably fast forward the whole thing and show you what we got at the end here. But uh, let's just get going and see what we got. I've already harvested, uh, I harvested a handful of them out of this spot um, the other day because I needed potatoes. Oh, that's a nice one. Uh, I needed potatoes for supper. I can't remember what variety these are, to tell you the truth. So, I don't... <laughs> I mean, the ones I ordered were... Um, I remember the ones I ordered were uh, Classic Russet, Russet Burbank, Purple Chief, and uh, Red Norlin. But this doesn't look like a russet to me. I mean, I'll show you more as I get them up, but that, this looks like what the variety called Superior. Um, or maybe, I don't know what these are, honestly. They're, they're smooth skin. And usually a smooth skin potato in my garden tends to get uh, uh, scab. Uh, and a lot of the potatoes I've harvested already this year have had scab in, in different parts of the garden. But these don't seem to be uh, afflicted. They don't seem to be afflicted in that way. So uh, that's good. But certainly size-wise, uh, things are looking good so far. I've got some decent size uh, potatoes happening here. So I mean, the reason I, I do this is just to make, it's, it's not, it's not because I think they're companion planting and the peas have magic powers that make the potatoes better or the potatoes have magic powers that make the peas better. That's not what, what, why I do this. Um, I, I tend to use the term, because a lot of people talk about companion planting and that's kind of the language they use. They don't say magic powers. I'm being a bit of a jerk uh, referring to it that way. Um, but um, that tends to be the way it's portrayed. You know, if you plant this with the tomatoes, the tomatoes taste better. If you plant, and I mean, I'm sure many people believe that. But you can, you can, many people believe Coke tastes better than Pepsi. But I think the vast majority of people probably couldn't tell the difference, right? So <laughs> if you believe something's true, it's, uh, let me I'll start from over here. You believe something true, it's true, <laughs> even if it isn't. That's just, uh, that's just humans. Oh my goodness, now these, let me bring the camera over closer so you can see what I'm doing here. I just realized that I have my camera, my back to the camera, so I should change the angle. Who wants, who wants to look at my back for an entire video? Uh, so, the ones over here, these look like russets. I'll bring, up, I'll, I'll bring these up to the camera and show you the difference. 
these are like a rusted potato of some kind. I can just tell because they've got the, the texture. So maybe I maybe I, I bought Superiors at a local place here. Uh, Vessi's sponsor of the show. I don't think they sell Superiors. But there's a place, you know, a garden center near where I live that does sell Superiors. Um, there's different ways to harvest potatoes. You know, today I just, some days I use a stick, some days I use my bare hands. Uh, today I feel like using this digging tool. <laughs> People are going to say, why aren't you, aren't you using your digging stick? I don't feel like that today. I have different days where I feel like doing different things. That's the joy of being human. You can change your mind. Yeah, these ones are are not coming up as big as the superiors. Arguably, these ones got better light, but they're a different variety. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. All right, so that that's the superior. I don't tend to plant them in my garden because they're susceptible. Yeah, this one's got scab. See how there's like little lesions on the skin? They're delicious potato, but they're susceptible to scab. Um, and, and that seems to have been afflicted them. You can still eat potatoes with scab. I might do a video on that one of these days. Anyway, these are russets, or might be Kennebecs. They look like russet to me. Different texture, right? Thick hard, tough skin, and generally speaking, kind of impervious to scab. I'm sure they're not 100% scab proof, but anyway, for my garden, these ones tend to never get scab, whereas these soft skin, lovely kinds of potatoes tend, tend to get scab. Uh, as you can see, we're, oh, we haven't even finished the one side yet, and we're getting, you know, Considering this was a bed for peas, right? <laughs> you know, this is turning out great, all right? Because I'm getting more use out of the space. Another reason to grow the potatoes. So again, this is not companion planting in the sense that growing the peas makes the potato better or growing the potato makes the pea better. That's not the point. It's just good neighbors. They use the space well. The pea creates a shade, but not so much that the potato can't grow. And uh, there's enough light for the potato to, to achieve maturity and give you a good yield. Also by growing the potatoes, remember you, you plant the potatoes once the peas are like a foot high or something like that, six inches high, right? So by the time the potatoes come in, once the potatoes start emerging from the surface, they start growing really fast, right? They put on a lot of foliage very quickly. Um, so you don't want your potatoes to outgrow the peas. You can plant peas much earlier than potatoes anyway, right? You can plant peas like the beginning of April sort of thing, right? Um, so you plant the peas around the beginning of April. You can plant the potatoes like in May or June. You know, as I've always said, you plant the potatoes when, when you see the uh, yellow flowers on the dandelions. But also when you're doing it this way, don't plant them until your peas have got some height, because you don't want the potatoes to outgrow the peas and cast shade on them. There's some more of those superiors. But the great thing about growing the potatoes is that because they put out all that full foliage, right, they, they smother out weeds. So even though they're, right, they're going to cast shade on the soil underneath them, they're going to keep the soil from drying out. So it's a strange way of thinking about planting something, but by virtue of having the potatoes here, uh, you're, that's a dead one, you're helping the peas get their water because the potatoes are kind of like a living, I mean you mulch them anyway, right? The way I plant potatoes is you, you dig a trench, you put the potatoes in the ground, you cover it with soil about six to eight inches deep, and then you mulch the whole thing, right? Uh, and then you don't do anything. So these, the peas here, and the potatoes, um, they were never mulched, or sorry, they were never watered the whole season, right? I stuck the peas in the ground in April, and then I put the potatoes in the ground sometime in May, mulched them, picked all the peas, now I'm picking all the potatoes. 
I never weeded or mulched or did anything in this bed. All I did was plant stuff and harvest it. So, you know, that's sort of my ideal gardening from my point of view, right? The soil's still in really good shape. So, uh, yeah, that's what we got off one side, right? This is a big bowl. This is like a 16 inch diameter bowl. Right, we've got some big ones here. I got a six foot four man, so this is about the width of my hand, four inches, four inch potato. That's not bad. Let's do the other side. Alright, so that's that's not bad. I think most of them, are, I think these are superiors. I thought I'd give them a try. Um, most of them have varying degrees of scab. That one's quite bad. Let me show you that. That's pretty, that's not dirt, that's scab. And it's pretty profound scab. So I, I will do a video in the kitchen showing how to prepare and cook scab potatoes. Um, and just a note on that, I mean, when you have scab on potatoes, I mean, I grow a number of varieties of potato. I probably grow about five or six different varieties of potato every year. I got a big garden here, got lots of space. Uh, the varieties that tend to get scab, not as scab resistant, I really like the way they taste. <laughs> I grow red Norlands here. They say they're scab resistant, but mine gets scab. I love these, I think these are superiors. I love these, they're delicious potatoes, but they're scab prone. So, the trick with these is you can't rely on them for long-term storage. Uh, the skin has been compromised, right? Also, when the skin's compromised like that, they tend to get uh, attacked by things that burrow into them, right? So, and then sometimes they'll have pieces taken out of them and it looks like maybe some vole or a mole or something is eating the potato, uh, but they never eat the whole thing. So what I think what they're doing is basically chewing away enough potatoes so they can get out whatever bug is inside the potato, <laughs> right? Um, otherwise, why aren't they just eating them all, right? Why are they just taking a bite out of this one and a bite out of that one? They're probably removing a pest from the potato for you. Not because they like you, but because that's just got, you know, higher nutritional value for them, right? It's you know, it's like eating a steak as opposed to eating a potato, <laughs> right? So anyway, I'm getting off, uh, off topic here. The point is, um, if you have potato, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a number of things potato related because I'm just anticipating questions I'm gonna get from viewers. Um, if it's the case that you're harvesting your potato and you're getting your scab, you can still use them. Just use them all up right away, right? Don't use those ones for long-term storage. These lovely uh, russets I have that are abs you know, absolutely blemish-free Right, those I can dry, dry, you know, get, get the, you know, I, I, what, what I do is I put these in the garage with the lights off with a, with a fan on them overnight, and that dries all the soil that's on them. 
and then I just pack them in cardboard boxes. Um, I'm going to do a whole video on this at a later point, but I've had different videos where I've shown different ways to store potatoes long term. Uh, last year, our upstairs fridge um, sort of fell apart. It fell apart on the end. It still works, but it fell apart. Um, so uh, I just moved it down into the garage and uh, put it back together with duct tape and stuff like that. <laughs> so I'm using that fridge downstairs as a cold room um, and it's working great. And I think it costs about 50 bucks a year to run it, that, that particular fridge with my electricity cost. So it's a pretty inexpensive cold room and it's, you know, very, it's, it's humidity controlled, temperature controlled, everything keeps really, really well. I was eating, I mean, I'm getting off topic again here, but I was eating last year's garlic right up until yesterday. <laughs> Right? It's stored in the fridge that well, right? I used up last year. I finished using last year's garlic yesterday. <laughs> so it's a great way to store things. Anyway, I'll do a video on that at a later date. Um, the point is that these uh, russets will be the long-term storage one, and these superiors that are all attacked and they're compromised, those are going to be used up this summer in potato salad and baked potatoes and mashed potatoes and roasted potatoes and sauteed with garlic potatoes and every other kind of way you could cook potatoes through delicious potato. But anyway, not a bad haul for a sort of surplus space, right? We've got a, a big trellis with all kinds of foliage, casting shade, um, and despite that, because it's the timing of it all, right? You plant the potatoes at the right time. Once the peas are up about a foot, you plant the potatoes the potatoes can put on a lot of foliage before the peas get eight feet high, right? And they're still getting light uh, for where I live. East is that way, west is that way. So the potatoes on this side of the, of the trellis are getting full sun from morning till noon, and potatoes on that side are getting full sun in the afternoon. There's just some trees over there, so the afternoon sun isn't as good as the morning sun here, but clearly, yeah, it worked, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, planting potatoes with peas, sort of follow up and reveal, totally works, great success. Um, yeah, I got some scab, that's just because of it, you know, the, I think it's a bacteria, the bacteria that causes that is in my soil. Um, the only way to deal with it is to put a whole bunch of sulfur in the ground and dramatically, drastically lower the pH of the soil, I don't want to do that. Because uh, I don't grow potatoes here every year, right? Next year I'm going to be growing something else. I like my pH to be around, you know, I'm, I, I've actually never done a soil test here, ever. But everything grows really well. And the soils in Nova Scotia tend to be acidic. So I'm going to guess the pH of the soil is somewhere in the area of 6, right? Because soils in Nova Scotia, especially on the eastern seaboard where I live, tend to be acidic, right? Um, you look at the forest, uh, you know, uh, all you got to do is look at, I'm not going to show you, but I got blueberries back there. They prefer acidic soil. My kids are picking a bowl of blueberries every day. Um, big, fat, juicy, healthy blueberry plants. Um, so I'm going to guess my soil is acidic because you don't have really good, healthy blueberries, generally speaking, without acidic soil. So my soil is acidic. Um, it's just not acidic enough to prevent scab. You have to make it like a pH of four, right? Neutral is seven. I'm gonna guess mine's around six or something like that. Uh, Cause everything, it's not so low that things suffer. Everything grows well here, so it's not really low. Um, it can't be neutral because my blueberries are doing so well and the soil in Nova Scotia tends to be acidic. Um, but yeah, for me, um, when I plant potatoes, it makes no sense for me to dump a bag of sulfur onto that soil to make it acidic. Um, it's easier to just plant potatoes like the Russet and the Russet Burbank. I uh, think Ken Kennebec too tends to be fairly scab resistant. Um, I'm just speaking all this because people are going to ask questions in the comments. I'm trying to speak to everything, so I apologize if you just want the video to end. Um, <laughs> for me, it's just easier to plant things that are um, scab resistant, use those for long term storage, and the things that are prone to scab, don't plant as much of those. Plant some and use them up right away, and then you can still enjoy them. You just got to peel, basically peel the scab away. Um, anyway, I hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Check out my weekly column at MaritimeGardening.substack.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. <laughs> Thanks for watching.